Dear Paul Scholle, partner at Morish uh, Solicitors LLP and member of the 2019 International Peace Delegation to Imrali. Thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. What do you understand or what do you think about the role uh, of Mr. Öcalan in the struggle for peace and freedom for the Kurds? Well, Mr. öcalan has been now in isolation for 21 21- years it's hard to believe uh, that we uh, here in England are worrying about being locked down for the last six months but he spent uh, 21 years uh, in isolation he is the embodiment um, of the Kurds independence movement the Kurds being 30 million strong and the largest stateless uh, group uh, in the world Um, uh, and he personifies Uh, their quest for a state and for a democratic uh, way of exercising their autonomy. Mr. Ozalan is under isolation for the last 21 years now and he's not been meet to uh, meet his basic human rights. And according to new policy of Turkish state, he will not be able to see his lawyers for next six months. So uh, what is Turkey's state aimed by isolating Mr. Ozalan? It seems to be that the Turkish state is frightened of what he promises. His uh, three approaches are to progress with democracy, equality and ecology. And he's written extensively about that. And Erdogan uh, and his cronies in Turkey at present uh, have got little truck with any of those issues. They they certainly don't want democracy. Uh, Equality is, is not a matter that concerns them. Uh, and ecology is not at the top of their agenda either. So Özalan continues to be held in harsh isolation conditions on Imrali Island prison. Uh, Why do you think freedom for uh, Mr. Özalan is important? The lack of a state for the Kurds means that if they're to be meaningfully represented, uh, then that representation has to be through a figurehead. And he is the de facto Uh, figurehead of the Kurds at present, Uh, whilst he's locked away in a remote prison, surrounded by soldiers, then what can he realistically do to move forward the progress that he seeks uh, for the Kurds? When you travelled to Turkey and Kurdistan with the Imrali delegation, you met with the HDP MP Leyla Guren, who was then along with thousands of others around the world on hunger strike to end the isolation of Abdullah Öcalan. Uh, what did you think when you met Ms. Guren? What was your impression of the mass hunger strike that was taking place? The circumstances were shocking, but also humbling. Leila Guven uh, was an incredible individual. I, if I remember rightly, we met with her in her home on the 92nd day of her hunger strike. So three three months um, without food and, and with almost no treatment to sustain her. But she remained strong and she remained incredibly positive. And, and what strikes me most of all is, is that she said people had asked her, did she hate life? Is that why she was on hunger strike? And she made it clear that no, she loved life, but she wanted that life to be democratic uh, and free uh, and safe for her people. What is your call and message to communities about on Freedom for Öcalan and the Time Has Come campaign? We all need to do what we can to make as much noise as we can about it. Öcalan now, and for some years, has been uh, the Mandela of the Middle East. Uh, The noise that the world made Uh, to support Mandela is a noise that the world needs to make now to support Abdullah Öcalan. As you know, following the attempt coup in 2016, Erdogan dismissed more than half of the judiciary and replacing them with individual loyal to Erdogan's AKP. Uh, In addition, the Turkish state uh, under Erdogan continues to crack down on all opposition and in particular the People's Democratic Party uh, having arrested another 82 politicians from the HDP over the last couple of weeks. Um, So in your perspective as a lawyer, how would you assess the rule of law or uh, lack thereof uh, in Turkey today? Turkey has a perfectly good 
a modern set of laws. But currently, it's not implementing them. So the rule of law does not hold in Turkey in 2020, in my view. The judiciary have been locked up. The politicians are being locked up. Two-thirds of elected HDP mayors have been replaced by puppets of Erdogan and the government. Uh, unless Turkey can apply its own laws in a sensible way, then the rule of law counts for nothing in the country. In your view, um, in what direction is Turkey heading now and um, what are the prospects um, for democratization in Turkey? I fear that they're not good and I fear that Turkey is going into a darker place. The lack of democracy, the lack of accountability, the willingness of the state to prosecute and simply imprison and hold in prison uh, those who disagree with it. And, it. and an increasing trend towards authoritarianism, which of course is not assisted by the, like of, by the likes of Trump uh, and his approach uh, to Turkey in the last few years. All of those things I think are leading uh, to a dilution uh, of democracy, human rights, and individual uh, rights throughout Turkey. Dear Paul Scholle, partner at Morris Solicitors and member of the 2019 Imrali Peace Delegation, thanks for joining us. Thanks for your comments today. Thank you very much. Thank you.